So you're working remotely and you're hosting a meeting or you need to join a meeting and your audio settings just aren't playing along. Well, I'm Mike Roderick, edutainer here at IT Pro TV, and I'm gonna show you how to fix those problems when you're running Skype or Zoom or Teams on Windows 10. So if you're working remotely and you're having trouble with your audio settings, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is check your Windows 10 settings. We can get there by going down to our taskbar and clicking on our Windows logo, and then choosing the gear icon to open up our settings. There's two places we're gonna to wanna to check in our Windows settings. There's the system as well as privacy. Let's start with privacy. Underneath privacy, we'll find our microphone options. Here's where we can determine whether or not apps are allowed to access our microphone. Normally, when you first launch an application, you'll get prompted on whether or not you want to allow that application to use your microphone and or your camera. So you start up Skype for the first time, for example, and it'll ask you for permission to use your microphone. This is Windows' way of keeping you safe and preventing bad applications from trying to take over your camera or your microphone. So here I can see a list of the applications that have been allowed access to my microphone. It's broken up into two sections. One of them is going to be store apps. These are applications that you've downloaded from the Microsoft Store. And you can see I have the ability to turn on and off their access to my microphone. So if I want to give one of these applications access to my microphone temporarily, I can, and then I can come take it away. But most of the applications that we're going to be using for remote work are what's called desktop apps. Those work a little bit differently. You can see down here, I can see a list of the applications that I've granted access to my microphone and or my camera. But I don't have the ability to individually turn that access off. So if you're having trouble with an application accessing your microphone, this is where you're going to want to check. And you'll see things like Skype in my list, Teams, as well as Zoom. And I could even see that some of them are currently using, because I'm doing this meeting remotely, uh, are actually using my camera and my microphone, and Windows lets me know that. But I can't take away access for an individual application. What I can do is right above here, we can see where I have an on and off switch. This will allow me to remove access from all of those desktop apps and hopefully stop if I'm worried or turn it on if I'm having trouble with an application. If the application you're using is not showing up here, probably the best thing to do is reinstall that application and hopefully you'll get that prompt again asking you whether or not you want to allow that application to access your microphone. So for example, if Zoom is having trouble, if you can't get your audio settings to work and it doesn't show up in this list, there's a good chance you might have accidentally clicked no and prevented it from accessing your microphone. So this is the first place you wanna check. Make sure the application has permissions to use your microphone. Another place we can check in our settings is underneath system. And from system, I can go down and I can choose sound. Here's where I can choose my default devices. If your computer only has a single device, many laptops, for example, have one camera and one microphone. So there's really nothing you can change here because you don't have a lot of choices. On a desktop system, however, you might have a built-in microphone and on a laptop. You might have a built-in camera and microphone, but you might have an external one that you've plugged in via USB, maybe. Maybe it's a better quality than the one that's built into your system. This is where you can choose which devices are considered the default. Most applications will let you change that after the fact, but this is where they're going to start. So if I choose a particular output device here, when I start up Zoom, that's the device it's going to try to use first. I can change that later in Zoom settings, but this is where it's going to start. So if you have multiple devices, but there's a particular one that you want to use every time you do a remote meeting, change it here. That way your applications will know which device you want to use, and you should have less configuration to do when you launch that meeting. Once you've got your Windows settings straightened out, we've taken a look at making sure the application has access to the microphone, and we've set our default devices. The next thing you'll want to do is look at the individual settings for those applications. So if we open up Zoom, in the top right-hand corner, you'll have a little gear icon. If you click on that icon, that's going to open up your settings for Zoom. In the settings, you'll find the audio settings. So if you choose audio from the navigation tree over there on the left-hand side, you'll see where you have both speaker and microphone. 
so I can control what device the audio output is coming from so I can hear everybody else in the meeting, and I can choose what device is capturing my sound so everybody can hear me. And they also give you a handy dandy test ability. So for example, under speaker, if I hit this drop down list, I will see the different devices that I have available on this system. And I can pick the one I want, and then I can click test speaker. Hopefully you can hear that, and that means you're successful, that your device is working properly. If you don't hear that, then you're gonna to wanna to either change devices or go back into your Windows settings and make sure that device has been enabled and that Zoom has access to that device. You can also test your microphone. Again, pick the appropriate microphone from your list of devices. You might have one, you might have several, and then click test mic. This will give you the ability to test or record a quick snippet of sound, and then it's gonna play it back for you. This will give you the ability to test or record a quick snippet of sound, and we'll stop that because we know it's working and we are good to go. So at this point, I should be able to join a meeting in Zoom and hear everybody and they should be able to hear me. Now there are some additional settings that you might want to change. You can stop here and just use the way it is or below, I have a couple of options that you might be interested in. First one here is use separate audio device to play ringtone simultaneously. This can be handy, if you're, especially if you're using a headset. You might be on a call with somebody or using another application, and if your device is in use, you might miss a call because the ringtone is not being played because you're already using the device with another application. This, if you check this box, now you can pick a different sound device. Notice that the one I've chosen up here is not in the list down here because it's saying what other device do you want to use? So this will allow me to say, okay, I also want the ringtone to play on this device. That way if my headphones are in use, I'll still hear the ringtone coming across my speakers and I won't miss that important call. Below that, you can choose whether or not your audio is joined automatically. You might want to start off unjoined and then have to join it uh, manually when you get into the meeting. It's very convenient though to let it go ahead and join your microphone as soon as you join the meeting. You can mute the microphone when you join the meeting. I have that one selected, I like that. Because when I first get in the meeting, I'm kind of rustling things around and I'm not ready for people to hear what I'm doing. And then once I get into the meeting and get settled, I can unmute my microphone from the meeting. You can also use the space bar to temporarily unmute yourself. This can be very handy. Rather than trying to find that mute button and click on it, you can simply hold the space bar down, talk, let go of the space bar, and you're muted again, much like you would a walkie-talkie. This can be nice unless you're doing some typing on another screen during the meeting. Every time you hit that space bar, you're gonna be changing the settings on your, mute, on your microphone, and that might not work out too well for you. All right, below you can do a sync buttons on headset. So if you got one of those fancy headsets that mutes and allows you to do things like that, you can sync the buttons so that the headset buttons will work with Zoom. So those settings are for Zoom. The next application we want to look at is going to be Skype. Right? Now I have to be real careful here because I'm using Skype to perform this meeting and I want to make sure that our audio and video stays connected so I won't be changing things in here, but I will be able to show you the particular settings. In Skype, in the application, in the top right, top left-hand corner, excuse me, you'll see your picture, or a little icon that represents you. And next to that, there will be three ellipsis dots. You can either click on your picture, and from that menu, choose settings, or you can click on the ellipsis dots, and you'll see settings in that menu as well. Either way, your settings will open up like you see here. On the left-hand side in that navigation tree, you can choose audio and video. This is where you're gonna change your camera settings as well as your microphone settings. And you can see the microphone settings are moving because as I said, this is the one I'm currently using and I can see myself now, which I don't like, but there I am doing this meeting, all right? So for the audio settings underneath microphone, very similar to Zoom. In fact, they're all very similar. It's really just a matter of knowing where to get to the settings, but they're gonna work the same way. Next to microphone, I have a dropdown list and I can see the various devices that I have available on this machine. And I can pick the one that I want to use. Notice the option there, in fact, I'm gonna go back into that. Notice that option, default communication device. Remember how we set the default device in the Windows settings? Now I can choose that from here, and it will just assume to, and use the one that I've set in the Windows settings. 
we have the ability to test it because I can see these dots. And this is like a little level meter and you can see it moving as I speak. And when I'm quiet, they go away. Uh, and that's letting me know that it is indeed picking up the microphone and everything is working properly. If you don't see any dots moving there, you're gonna to need to check your settings and windows, check your microphone, or make sure you've picked the appropriate one from the drop down list. There's also the option right below here, that little blue dot. That is gonna give me the ability to automatically adjust microphone settings. This will play with the volume for you and, and make sure that you're not uh, a little too loud on the other end or a little too soft. It'll try to do that automatically. If you're not comfortable with it or if it doesn't seem to be working, if people are telling you, hey, look, I still can't hear you, you're seeing the dots move, you might wanna uncheck that, turn that off, and then you can manually control the microphone, basically how sensitive that microphone is. I'm gonna put it back on auto. Hopefully I didn't just mess up our meeting here. Below that, you've got the speakers and that's gonna work the same way. I have a list that I can choose from. And right, I'm gonna hit that drop down list and zoom back in. There's the different devices that I have on this system that I can choose to have the sound coming out of. Again, notice the option for default communication device and that will just use the particular device that I picked in the Windows settings. Right. Uh, and I can also slide this slider to control how loud it is as well. And there's a handy dandy test audio. Now I'm not gonna use that in the middle of this meeting, but it'll do the same thing we saw in Zoom. It'll play sounds out of my speakers to make sure I can hear it, as well as record my voice and play it back for me to make sure that I uh, have picked the appropriate microphone and is working correctly. It actually will make a little test call to yourself and you'll hear a computer voice come on and talk to you uh, and then you talk back to it and it'll play that back for you. If all goes well, if you've picked the appropriate devices, everything should work fine. Right? Below that, a couple of those advanced options, kind of like we saw in Zoom, unmute for incoming calls. So if you wanna automatically unmute your microphone when you pick up the phone, when you click on the answer call, you can turn that on. If you'd rather start off muted, leave that turned off. Same thing with the ring on additional device. We saw this in Zoom. If I turn that on, I'll get a new list and I can pick an additional device to have that ringtone play on so hopefully I don't miss one of those important calls. And those are gonna be our Skype settings. The last one we wanna take a look at is Teams. I'm gonna open up Teams, and in Teams, the settings are located underneath your little profile picture you can see in my top right-hand corner. If I click on that, I can find my settings options. From Settings, again, very similar to the other two we've just seen, this one is called devices, so it's not called audio or video, but it's simply called devices. You can see a little picture of a headset there. And if I click on devices, I get a very similar set of options than we saw in Zoom and Skype. Arranged a little bit differently though. I'm gonna zoom in so we can see this and then I'll zoom back out so I can click on them. You'll see I have three drop-down lists here. I have audio devices, speaker, and microphone. When I choose from that first drop-down list, audio devices, that's gonna change the values in the speaker and the microphone. If I want to do, and this is basically what they're saying is, pick your device and we'll use it for both your speaker and your microphone. And this works for most scenarios, right? Because the speakers and the microphone are typically from the same device, like on your laptop, for example but you might have a system where you've got more than one device to choose from and you wanna choose a different device. I do this a lot of times in our meetings because I like to be able to use a microphone that I've got clipped to me, but I don't wanna use the speakers. I want my computer speakers to play the sound rather than having to put in a little earbud. So what I have to do, and I'll zoom back out so we can click on things, is change this to custom. All right, let's try a couple of things here first though. You notice if I choose PC and mic, then I can see speakers are coming from my PC and the microphone is coming from my PC. If I change this to pile USB, notice both of these change to pile USB. Again, one drop down list to control both of the bottoms. But what if I wanna do different values for speaker and microphone? That's where custom comes in. So you can see that option for custom setup. I click that. That allows me to pick one device for my speakers, but a different device for my microphone. Notice I've got my PC speakers up on the top, and I've got my Pile USB sound card for my microphone. So if you wanna mix and match, you wanna go with a custom setup. 
They also give you the ability to make a test call so you can test out your settings and make sure your custom setup or whatever you've chosen is working. And like Zoom and Skype, I have the options for a secondary ringer. So I can pick whatever is I have in this list. Notice the one that I've chosen for speakers does not show up in this list because that wouldn't be, actually it does, doesn't it? Oops, so it is gonna be there, but it'll let you choose that. If you choose the same one that your speakers are, it's not really a secondary ringer, so I'm, I'm surprised they allow me to choose that, but uh, keep that in mind when you're picking those. Make sure you, if you're gonna use a secondary ringer, pick one that's different from the current speaker setup. So that's a quick look at the different audio settings that you have available as we looked at the Windows settings uh, to control what microphone is default and make sure the uh, apps have access to those microphones. And then we took a look at Zoom, Teams, and Skype and the audio settings within. Hopefully this will help you the next time you need to either host or join a remote meeting. Check out the playlist for more working from home tips and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Mike Roderick and thanks for watching.